What's up? Welcome to another Wizard Foo live stream. And uh, for you, for you watching on it on, oh man, I can't even talk today. I just woke up from a nap. Ha. <laughs> Anyways, for y'all on YouTube watching this later, welcome. Hope you're having a good day. Anyways, what I'm working on today is behavior trees, AI components, and a budding AI system. So, uh, where I am right now, I've just uh, taken um, the behavior trees and from Songbringer and move them over to Loadragger and I've created I've separated out behaviors so um, the behavior class was something that was inside AI component um, in Songbringer but I decided to uh, modularize that and make it so the behaviors are in behavior.h behavior.cpp and AI component has its own header and cpp file and then AI system will use them all so what a behavior tree is, um, is basically just a way of deciding what actions to take that an AI will take. It's just a tree of, um, of instructions and, um, and some of those instructions are like, if this, do that. And some of the instructions are just like, do this in this current state. Uh, you know, it's just a, basically a way of um, controlling an AI. It's quite simple and powerful because it's data driven. Um, to change an AI, all you got to do is change a text file, rerun the game, don't even have to recompile anything. That's pretty neat. Except when you're adding things to your AI system, then you have to recompile, add that certain bit of code, which happens for a certain uh, behavior thing. So, um, behavior, what do you call these? Each element of the behavior tree each leaf each node or whatever you would call that so um, they're usually based on sequences and selects those are the main things uh, that are used to control an AI um, but anyways let's get things rolling with uh, what I'd like to do today is actually have an AI on the screen so we'll be trying to create um, a an actual like creep character uh, so let's go to that um, I mean, let's let's open up uh, Photoshop and we will get the placeholders open. And I'll create a placeholder icon for the creep character, and um, then we'll use some behavior trees to start trying to control it. Um, so, anyways, but I first I've already created this behavior.h behavior.cpp AI component and all that. Got it compiling, but there's a lot of underlying code that needs to be done to get this all working as well. So uh, bear with me. So let's go to placeholders.psd. We'll get that open, create a tiny icon for the creep character. I guess it kind of looks like a ghost. Maybe that might be fun. Let's duplicate that. Um, so I am creating most of Loadragger's gameplay without even caring about the art quality at first. Um, I already added a, I already created a whole voxel engine, but um, there's some snags right now. So it's nice to actually focus on creating BA, like creating uh, the whole gameplay first. It's also quite freeing as a game developer because you don't have to get Distracted by creating art. Certus, add the game development too. I did add that. That's weird. What's up, Alessandro? Howdy. <clears throat> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I just woke up from a nap, so my brain is a little bit sluggish, but um, I'm well otherwise. How about you, man? How are you doing? You're great. Good to hear. Anything new? Where? 
Oh, I think it's supposed to be here. Nice. Glad to be streaming right when uh, right when you were looking. I already added game development. Yeah, game development. It's right here. Okay, I'm not worrying about this. All right. Um, creep character. Let's copy this ghost. Make a little icon for the creep. We'll make it look sort of like a skull, maybe. Dami Killer, what's up? How's it going? There we go. Okay, we got a creep icon. Call this placeholders thirty six. All right, so now we're ready to create a creep character. Um, we need a system though that like spawns them every once in a while. Oh, uh, what I did before is I would make a an AI that would spawn other AI. Okay, that that well, I should that should be done later. The simplest thing I could do is just create a creep initially. Play some Warframe? Sweet, man. Nice. That's cool. I got screen envy. I wish I had more than one screen. I need to work that out. I got the money for another laptop, but I think I want to get another boat instead. I need sort of like a more home than just a van. So... Two homes would be nice. Okay, so we can go to systems. And create an AI character, or let's call it, let's just create a data file for that. And, um... Open up creep. What? No, not tag. Creep. Oh, there we go. Okay. So the creep has an input component. Um, render component. Placeholders. Thirty-six. No nims yet. Z order. We'll keep some of these render flags. Move speed. Uh, the character moves really fast. Let's move the player or these creeps real slowly. No footsteps. Mask. Oh, the movement mask can't move on top of. Can move on top of the player. Maybe not. Maybe you have to swing a sword or some kind of weapon. Okay, but let's make him able to move on top of the arena at first. Yeah, the results of Songbringer were positive. Yeah, it was a great game. Well received, lots of people really liked it. Made enough money to make the next game. I'm hoping one day I can have a real big hit in life. I'd love to have a hit game. Collisions, category, when it collides, we want it to collide with, oh wait, no, sorry. It's category, 
is creep. It's neutral, so it's no, no team. And it collides with nothing. Uh, no role component. Does have an AI component, though. Oh, we want to we want to put the AI component in line. Oh, I see why I did it a certain way. Okay. All right. So what I got to do is decide something here. That's AI for the creep. I definitely want to put the AI for the creep right inside this. Um, creep dot text. So shoot, I might as well just copy it from. Like, let's copy some some AI from Songbringer. Just a quick thing so we can uh, get something going here. Data, enemies. I think no foes. Blob. Let's copy the blob AI. It's really really simple. Here's its behavior. I think we should just go ahead and throw this right here as its AI. That's good. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's comment out some of it. In fact, let's just keep it really simple and only have one, one thing. Sequence if dir and rand, or dir and speed, Shoot, we'll even start off with no speed. There we go. So I can just undo that little change real quick when I want to implement it. Okay, so let's go ahead and create. Um, in the overworld, let's create a, a creep entity. All right, and we need uh, oh we need to set a position for it. We want to set that position. It needs to be near the player. Block size times times and a half times screen size. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Okay, now we're creating a creep entity. Great. So we have an AI component and it needs to load its Hmm. We need a basically it's two things we need for the AI component. We want um, all of its behavior tree data. We also need sort of a file name for it. Let's see if we can work that into this. Like if we were to go AI. Or like an AI key. Hmm. Ah, it'd be more convenient if the AI component was created a little bit differently. 
with just a data component. Oh. oh, I know what to do. No, it did, it still needs some kind of key. Hmm. Let's get uh, AI components being able to be created. Start off with that. All right, so int dot h. AI components. We need AI components to have their own SID, so it can be accessed in the entity component system, and any components can be created and all that. This is just adding it to the ent object, which makes it handy to have everything about a certain entity at one one place. Hmm. I guess it wouldn't need a key, a, a key if uh no we need we need a key shoot like we could just go key creep or name creep AI name creep is that sort of redundant because we're uh we're passing it in from creep dot text. It'd, be, it'd just be way handier if we could just say AI, blah, blah. But see, we've got this really handy entity add component thing, which only takes one, oops, one, um, one argument, data query AI. Shoot, and that would really complexify things. Or would it? Huh, I wonder if I had a function. Since this is a single threaded game, if I had a function for what entity was currently being created, like the file name. So when we go ant create data path, it would save data path. Or we could pass in data path to the entity add component. Ooh, but that would really make all the components more complex. Shoot, I guess the easiest way to do this for now is just to add int to has a
static string read uh, get data path for the current entity being created. Okay, so now we can get that. So when we create an AI component, now we can boil that down to behavior.load ent, we need ent. My autocomplete stopped working. Okay, so now behavior load also needs not only a file name. but a data. So we can return things from the cache. Okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, what's up with this? Uh, all right. Oh. Oh shoot. <laughs> There's other things that the AI component needs besides its behavior. Like speed, mask, flags, excel duration, that kind of stuff. Right. Okay, so we probably need to change all that. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, man. Okay, so we would need like AI is this, and then behavior is this.
speed, whatever. Or we could just say this is the behavior. But the behavior is not really a component, it's part of AI. All right, that's good enough. So when behaviors load, no, the AI component loads the behavior, it needs to b.query behavior. Now, hopefully that's, this compiles, okay, it didn't, uh, what's wrong? My 23, oh, what did, I, what did I miss? Uh, one of those. One of these parentheses, not important at all, couldn't be. End dot night, also line 96. What, line 96? Man, my brain is mush today. Oh man, there's this error with the newest Xcode, or this Xcode has this bug now, as of Xcode version 10, where it doesn't show you what the error is unless you compile it in Xcode. Of course, we can't. It's supposed to be a const string. Yes, all right, we're able to compile now. Now, let's set a breakpoint when we go and actually create an AI component. So we can see this behavior tree and see if it actually loads it properly, parses it properly as well. So I set a breakpoint here where it creates the behavior. And we should hit that breakpoint right from systems.cpp when we create the creep entity. And it loads it from its text and loads up this AI component. Great. We got the breakpoint. That means everything should be all hooked up. Here we are. Yep. We're calling this from create uh, arena, setup arena. We're creating the creep.txt. And it goes into ant create and adds the AI component and there's the AI component created from its own memory contiguously okay so let's go ahead and step into uh, that current data path is creep.txt that's cool v.query behavior that should return the behavior yes it has one child it's one child is select and select has one child which is a sequence sequence has two children right right okay that's all well and good let's make sure that it goes and parses it correctly so that should be a new behavior and it's cached behaviors list so it's gonna go ahead and parse that Okay, so it sets up the parse true, 
it's parsing out its type from v.getKey. That should be a select. Now its type is Oh, it's type is a vowel. It's type one. Hmm, those aren't enums. Those should be enums. Vowel type. Oh, I see it as an enum type. Okay, so this should be type type. None of these should be K anything. Let's stop this up and we'll change all the K null and all those to C's. And we should change the type to it. Type enum. Go to behavior.cpp and look for all those other ones. There's one other sequence which I would like to have this feature here. This is a feature where I can um, set the current sub behavior tree as a sort of like a debug label. So when I'm debugging my AI, I can see, oh, I'm currently in this type of sequence or that type of select or this succeed. Okay, let's rerun this. I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick. Be right back. <laughs> oh, one more to change there. One more, there's plenty more. All right, there we go. Let's check to make sure that breakpoint's on the right line still. Good. Okay, let's see it parse this behavior tree now. Having those um, strongly typed enums will help as we're debugging. I guess we should set it all the way down here. The breakpoint should be there. All right, now we type parse and we have type is int. Good. Let's key val select int val is 101. Nice. So the way I designed my behavior trees was every every node in the tree. So we're talking about uh, this is here's we've got the behavior and all of its nodes in its tree. There's, there will typically be a lot more AI code than just four lines, 
but the AI code, each one of the lines can be an integer, a floating point, or a string. Um, the integers all represent behavior tree types, or trees, tree words, whatever you want to, nodes. I don't know what the hell to call that, really. And then if, um, if a, if it had, say, like, dirt, or, like, speed, 2.0 or whatever, this would be a floating point value. Actually, anything that's a number is a floating point value because only integers are reserved for just the um, behavior types. And then strings are other stuff, so like dir, like or like AI, something, something, something. That would be a string. Okay. Types not equal to int. Good. Splits its words. What are these? We've just got select, so we should just have one word. We have no words. Ah, because V has no stir valve. Okay. All right, it sets up a minimum minimum number of behavior values. Loop over the children and create more behaviors for them. All right, so this behavior type is um, so like sequence. This will be sequence. It has an int value of 100. It also won't have any words. Oh, it does have a word. What? Oh, sequence stuck. Right, 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 right. This thing has a... a word after it's... Let's see what happens here. It's considered a value. Ah. Uh, Good, now we're parsing dir, and it should have an integer value after it as well. Okay, it appears to be parsing correctly. Let's go ahead and let go of control and let this run. We should be able to have the creep appear on the screen. Okay, there he is up in the upper right corner. It's not doing anything yet, of course, because there's no AI system to actually call the behavior tree and, and cause it to do anything. So we uh we have a good um thing going here. We've got a creep on the screen. He's this little skull-like entity over here. I'm the circle. That represents the player for now. And um 
So now we need to create an AI system. Uh, did I have any progress with the 3D graphics? Yeah, I did a lot. Um, I've got it to the point now where I've got to take either one path or the other. So it's kind of a big decision. And I had spent so much time working on the voxels and not enough time working on the gameplay. So I've got uh, the voxel engine kind of on the back burner right now. And I'm ready when I go back to working on the voxels and the 3D graphics and stuff. It'll be... Um, I'll have to make that decision. Am I going to go down this route or this route? So um, it's kind of nice to not make that decision right now because I love to, when, I, when I'm faced with hard decisions, it's really nice to have a minute to sleep on it, let relax, let my subconscious mind work on it for a while. And it's also really awesome to be working only on gameplay because um, usually when I make a game, I'm working on art and gameplay at the same time. And um, working on the art is can be quite distracting. It's really nice when you're in a phase where you can just create art, but the gameplay has to be done to do that. So it's really nice to create the gameplay before creating the art. I've never done this before in making games, and um, I certainly like it a lot right now. Okay, we've got that. It's able to parse this this little sequence and stuff. So let's go ahead and copy over the rest of the AI. Okay, we'll see if it can parse all that. So you notice I didn't have to recompile anything right there. I added some AI code to the text file and didn't have to recompile anything. Great, it's able to parse all that. Let's um actually let's go back to AI component. We'll set this breakpoint here again. And I want to see it after it's parsed that entire behavior tree. Just make sure the behavior tree is all good. Okay, we got this AI component behavior. Good, it's parsed. Here's all its children of the select. These should all be sequences. Yep, type sequence, children, yada yada. Let's check this one out. This is uh, should be another sequence. This one is uh, if if dir if dir something. What's the dir? It's got four values. If dir none. Oh, every every one of these has four different values, so that it can. It just makes the AI system a little faster. Okay, well it appears to be parsing correctly. So let's go ahead and turn off that breakpoint. And now, now we can create an AI system. Wow, I didn't think I'd get this far in this live stream. Cool, that's good to know. Okay, we've got components, AI components. We've got behavior trees parsing. Now we're gonna go ahead and start off the AI system. So AI system is so basically a stub right now. Let's go ahead and start that off. Um, we're going to need, we don't need AI component. There's no public system. These are now namespaces. Yeah, so this is code I've basically just copied over from um, Songbringer. Um, but there's a lot of simplifications I've made since Songbringer with all the kit foo, other stuff like that I'm creating. So we're going to go ahead and make all these 
simplifications. Tick is now just a void void. Right, let's go ahead and check out another system and see what we did with these headers here. Namespace move system, bool construct, I probably need to do that. And a void tick, void animate. These are the only things you really need. Pragma once, of course. There you go. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll if zero out this stuff for now. So now we just got a construct and a tick. And then we will also want to add it to the tick all. So tick all is from systems and it just ticks every single AI system. Input system first, move system. Probably want to put AI system right up here before moving things. Maybe after move system. We need to add it as a header. Open up AI systems.h, put that in there. Move system. Anything else? Oh, we want to construct it. AI consistent system construct. Good. That's about all. Great. Now we've got it hooked up into there. We also need AI systems or AI system no CPP. Okay, this is going to be a ton of stuff that we, ton of code we don't need yet. In fact, shoot, let's let's start off, start like this with nothing. I'll go ahead and delete everything, and only copy over what I need. So we're going to include AI system dot h um, and dot h. And whatever else we feel like. We need a bool AI system construct. Just return true for now. This we'll need to use this if we ever have some kind of like I don't know persistent caches or other types of systemy things that need to be constructed. So we'll do a void AI system tick. Great. And let's go ahead and start off the tick so we need an AI system tick method so every one of the ticks in the game it goes and loops over all of its AI components and runs the behavior trees so now we have got let's get uh, systems closed now extract let's compile let's make sure we get, we're able to compile at this point and oh gosh we might as well get rid of these too all this stuff we don't quite need at first. All right. Close all the files I'm not using right now. We'll keep creep open. Behavior looks like we can close that. AI yeah, component, we can close that. We just want AI system open. And in fact, we also want Songbringer. Ooh. Songbringer's AI system. Here's a Songbringer's AI system. It loops over all its AI components. Runs all of its... Oh gosh, I forgot how Songbringer had moods as well as behavior trees. That's because I created Jib first without the behavior trees and he used moods and I never wanted to change him because he had this cool specific AI that made him feel different than all the other AI. So, but anyways, we can, um, gosh, there's a lot of stuff we don't need at first. This is all we need right here. Just need to loop over the AI components. Let's just start with that. For auto id in entity get all AI component, so we're looping over all of the EIDs, entity IDs, if you will, for all the AI components, and then we are um, creating an entity. Oh shoot, we shouldn't, we shouldn't loop over any, so if int 
get now let's go entity entity get AI component. No, we want to loop over. Shoot, what is the um? I'm trying to make it so we don't loop over entity any entities that are in the underworld because they're so low dragger is going to be a multiplayer game with a an overworld map and an underworld maps like the caves whatever. So um, I don't want to loop over any AI components that are running in the caves. Shoot, maybe I do. Actually, yeah, let's not even worry about this at this point. Probably want to loop over all the AI for now. This one thing about this is, um, is a per, this game is performing horribly slowly because I've got like four thousand tree entities on this in the in the entire arena, always in memory, and then four thousand more entities for the underworld. So there's like a ton of sprites, and that causes the game to run really slowly, even when some of the sprites are invisible. Anyways, there's tons of performance optimizations that could be done there. But for now, I'm focusing entirely on gameplay, even to the point of not even focusing on optimizations, which is crazy. It's hard as a programmer to not optimize things, but to focus only on the important things. So it's a challenge, but I like it. All right, so if we if this entity, if e.behavior, oh no, sorry, e.ai.behavior is valid, then we need to run the, this behavior tree um, in, let's close AI system, we don't need that anymore. Songbringer had this behave function. Um, let's, so all of these things need to become, okay, this is the, basically what was wrong with Songbringer's AI system was sort of, it needed to be refactored a bit because I threw every single one of these different sequences, uh, or, you know, nodes of the behavior tree. So I still don't know what word to use there. Leaves, I guess. Okay, let's just call them leaves. Every one of these leaves in the behavior tree, um, uh, they're all here in this same function, all in this behave function. So this behave function is gigantic. How many hundreds of lines? There's like at least 500 lines here, if not a thousand. We're all whoa. Yet yeah, we're up at a thousand lines. <laughs> how much? How how long is it? Two thousand lines. This is a two thousand line function. Right? There's nothing wrong with that when it comes to a person playing your game, but when it comes to maintaining your code, that is this is already we're already at three thousand lines. No, two yeah, about two thousand lines of code right there. Dang. So I think these should be switched out for functions. Will we just look up what behavior node It is in the behavior, so we would look up the word in the behavior words and run a particular function for whatever behavior that is. And we need to, how do we loop over the behavior? Behavior B, Ah, uh, it runs itself. Okay, this is a recursive function. So we need a recursive function that we can call to run a behavior.
We'll add this to the namespace. Oops, namespace AI system run behavior. Oh, and they also need to return true or false, I think. Yeah, that's the whole point of the behavior tree. Well, no, that's the whole point of what is the word? Uh, finite state system, something like that. Finite state tree. Uh, I can't help but think, though, that this should be part of part of behavior. But no, it really does. This code really, really does belong inside AI system, not behavior.cpp. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a map, just like input system. Input system has a map of functions that it can run. Call it a behavior func. Might as well pass in the entity. Yeah, that's cool. And ref. And we need to pass in the behavior as well. So we've got a map of. Shoot, did we name behavior types? Hmm. Oh, nope, we didn't. Just needs to be enum behavior type. Int. Chat is blocked? I don't know what happened there. Behavior type int. Uh, is there something I did wrong? Is there a, somehow I can unblock the chat? I don't I didn't change anything. Okay, cool. So the map is now a behavior type and a behavior funk. And this is the C behavior funks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, and this can now be an expressions move. So we need expressions. I'm going to go ahead and create it like I create in collision component. This is a uh, We'll just add it to the name, the AI namespace. Expressions move, map type. C 
see behavior select. I guess that'll need to be at the end of the file. So we would need a function Gosh, this should be up here. And this should be something like this, like static void. What do they take? Ents and behaviors. So behavior select is takes an ent ref and a const behavior ref. There we go. We're also going to need, oh no, these are bools. Shoot. These need to return bool. It at least needs to return something. So we need two of these at least to create this map in this, in this way. So we'll do behavior select and behavior sequence. And now C behavior funks should be able to be create. Oh, we need one more thing here. This is expressions move. And all that's part of AI system. That's behavior select. This is behavior sequence. Don't need that. This is what we need to do when we run a behavior. Just look it up. Oh, we need map and words. Hmm, why is map type still giving me an error? Ah, I just added that. That's weird. Okay, so if we find the behavior funk, then we run it with, oh, we need the entity. Run it with E and B. And here are, let's go ahead and just delete those. Okay, now we should have everything set up. Why is we still getting an error there? Oh, we don't have expressions, do we? Oh, we do have expressions. Why is map type? Oh, that's words map type. Oh, it's not words map type. Shoot. No, this is map. Um, behavior type. Um, behavior funk. Right? Behavior funk. Okay, why are we still getting an error? Let's 
just need to be the address of no Ent ref const behavior ref returns a bool. This is an ent ref const behavior ref returns a bool. What? Huh, I'm kind of stymied as to why this isn't compiling. Let's compile this in Xcode, see if it can give us a better error than Xcode builds command line interface. Okay. No known conversion from ab ability type. Oh, I got C ability hammer right here. This is supposed to be behavior sequence. Duh. Aha. Much better. Ah, this just needs to be behavior type. Come on. Behavior type, B dot type. What? Can't convert from behavior val to behavior type without a. Oh, this is. Oh. B dot type dot I think it's type dot type. No type dot int. Gosh. What is it? Behavior dot h. Let's open that up. Behavior val. Oh, it's int val. So behavior dot type dot int val. Okay, and when all of this needs to return a bool. Okay, can we compile yet? Oh yeah, finally compiled our AI system. Our budding AI system. The thing that's just about to start to bud. Start to grow. Okay, We've got things in place. So it should be a lot more organized code at this point too than, so it's using a map of behavior types to behavior functions rather than Songbringer's entire huge list of functions. All, or all mech sub functions inside of one function. A 2000 line function is not what we need here. Huh. Yeah, right, this is great. Okay, we'll see if it works. It should run the behavior, we should get this breakpoint. The AI system is all set up to run. We've done that from systems tick all. We should also check if it constructs. Set a breakpoint there too. We can turn off the AI component, breakpoint. Let's see what we got. Man, so much of starting a video game is programming. So much of finishing a video game is programming. But in the middle, you get to create tons of art. I can't wait to make art. But I gotta, I gotta get this code in place, this structuring and stuff. Okay, AI system construct. Is this where we are? Yep, for systems construct all, great. It returns true. So that, that's just, that's all well and good. Now, we should be getting another breakpoint when the systems finally tick. Here we go. Good. We're getting that other breakpoint. All right, we can get rid of that breakpoint. We don't need it. All right, so we should be ticking the entity that we know of as the creep. 
it's, it's the only thing really with the behavior at this point. Cool, it's looking like it's, it's all good behavior. So we should, we're now gonna search the behavior funks for this behavior type. We've only created select and sequence. So uh, this first one should be select. Let's make sure that's actually what it is. Yeah, cool, we're, this is a select leaf. I'm calling them leaves. I guess it's a word for it. Should find it. Good, found it. It's gonna run it with E and B, entity and the behavior tree. Good, behavior select does nothing at this point. And behavior sequence probably does nothing too. So once again, we should have the, yeah, this is our creep. He's here on the screen. We can't walk on top of him, but he's not doing anything yet because none of the AI systems have been created. We haven't created functions for any of this stuff. So we need to start creating functions until this AI actually can move around and do stuff. If is a huge one to create, dir. Yeah, we so it's time to start putting this all together, my friends. All right. We need sequence to do stuff. We we'll keep open Songbringer's AI system, Load Ragger's AI system, and Creep. Good, that's all we have open. All right, we want to go to Songbringer's behavior select. So we're looping over all the children and we're just calling AI system run behavior. And uh, sequence returns true if everything succeeds. If anything fails, it returns false. Now we need some things that actually happen. It'd be nice to do the dir command. That would get some motion in place. This is a long one here. Wow. Who man, this is gonna be a lot of work. Like refactoring all this code from Songbringer's AI system. Okay, gotta take this in chunks. Gotta take this one step at a time. Let's copy it all, I guess, to start. Behavior dir.
Uh, one second. <clears throat> okay. What is the simplest way to do this? All right, we're going to turn all this off first. And we're going to go ahead and Turn off this entire behavior. And we'll turn on just a very simple sequence that we can parse. We'll just even call it simple. We're just going to go sequence simple. If Not even if, just dir south. So it'll do this every single time. Every single time it runs the tick, it's going to set its direction to south. We need to parse that kind of word though. And we also need words for behavior directions. All right, and so let's set these up with their words. We'll change all these k durs to c behaviors. What's up, I'm Mario John. What am I hacking on? I'm hacking on a video game called Load Ragger. It's a five-on-five -five real-time multiplayer game, and uh, it will be all a real-time game at this point it's just a very early prototype um, it's going to be a 3d voxel game engine uh, but for now I'm using two-dimensional sprites to mock up all the gameplay how are you doing welcome
Oops. Yeah, right on. I like hearing that. Yeah, I can't stand working with any kind of game development software. I have to have, oh, I have to have the command line. Yeah, it's, it's same here. I don't have anything against anyone else developing with um, game engines like that. I just don't prefer them myself. I prefer the command line. What about you, man? What do you code in? What do you have? Do you use a certain game engine or? So we need all these to be words. Set up those. Nice, I found a Vim command which deletes all these nicely. Oops, not that one. Yep. Yep. SDL, nice. It's C. Nice, you're using C. Cool, man. I considered writing this game in C, but I found out that C can compile, or I mean C++ can compile just as fast as C, as long as you're not using the STL and templates too much. So I stuck with, um, stuck with using C++. Because I love being able to overload operators, those kinds of things. What's Vim Surround? Oh my gosh, please help me upgrade my Vim life. Oh, Vim Surround. Yeah, I know what Vim Surround is. That's when, you, when you're inside a certain word, Vim Surround can surround it with like parentheses and stuff. I need to learn that, don't I? War cried, hello. You can always write your own allocator. That's true. Delete around. Yeah. I need to do that. Gosh, I need to. I really need to invest some time into upgrading my Vim um, workflows. You know what I mean? Yeah, Vim surround. Shoot. Let me just let me pull, pull up a link to that so I can remember to do something about that. For a while, I was searching the internet for like Vim tips and stuff like that, and it was really helping. Like I'm like, okay, cool, I'm upgrading my Vim work workflows, but uh, yeah, surround. I need to get that one. Also, I wish. Oh, one thing I could do is I wish. Um, yeah, it's from Tim Pope, right? Let's get that up there. I'm saving a link to that so I can do something about it. Right, change around it to curly braces. There's probably a lot of power in that, huh? Ooh, I'm excited. Okay, so we've got behavior.h, behavior.c, pp. Now is parsing those behavior directions. <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Install it right now. Okay. Worth shot. Yeah, you're right. Why would I wait to do it later when I could do it now? Here we go. Vim bundles. Sweet. Okay, we got it as a bundle. Shoot, this should be enough, right? Let's see. Oh, I probably need. An, I need to restart my Vim though. Okay, I'm closing my Vim session, opening it up. Okay, so let's try out a couple of those things you're talking about. Um, delete around DSA parentheses. Delete surround. What's the A? So DSA, delete surrounding, uh, what's that? <clears throat> okay. Following your lead.
sort of. There's my hello world. DSA parentheses. That didn't work. Is it D? Are you sure it's an A? What's the A part? Yeah, I was in the parens. Okay. DSA parentheses. Didn't work. What do I got wrong here? I'm already on GitHub. Surround a vim. Oh, that's cool. What's up, biter kid? Change. Okay, I got this. Change surrounding quote, double quotes, single quotes. Let's try that out. Um, change surrounding left parens to curly brace. Hey, it worked. You gotta put it on the paren? Doesn't that kind of, does that defeat the purpose of the surrounding though? DS. Oh, that worked, cool. Delete surrounding. But okay, if I'm inside here, delete, delete surrounding. No, that works. That doesn't. You don't have to have it on the prints. Boom. <laughs> oh, boom. Did I find a place to live? No. I mean, I I technically live in my van at this point, uh, and I also want to get a boat. Okay, so yeah, that worked. Um, I also like this. Change surrounding parens to, let's say brackets. That worked. Oh, I don't like that it added a space though. Shoot, there's probably a setting for that, right? How do you ch how do you make it so it doesn't do a space? Oh, you use the closing instead of the opening for no space. Hey, all right, let's try that again. So I want to change these to brackets without spaces. So I'm going to go ahead and change surrounding right parens to right bracket. Oh, it worked. Sweet. I'm upgrading my Vim skills. Yay. OK, let's try something else. What else do we want to do? I love the delete surrounding. Like, what was I doing there just a second ago? Yeah, high five. High five. Delete surrounding. Oh, I can just delete surrounding right bracket. Whoa, that didn't work. What happened? Delete surrounding right bracket. Hey, that worked. And if I delete surrounding left bracket, it also doesn't do a space. That's cool. I wish it didn't insert spaces by default. I could probably change that somewhere. Insert parens. Okay, yeah, how do I do that? Ins it's probably I S. Hold on, I S. Oops. No, it's not I S. Of course, it's not I S. Not insert mode. How do you? Okay, so how do I insert Y S? Y S. That would copy it, right? Wouldn't that just copy it? Y insert. What's the A again? Whenever you're giving me this A letter, what's what's A? Um, yank surrounding inner word. Oh, A is a round word. There you go. 
That is oh, totally. Thank you for uh, helping me upgrade my Vim skills again. I knew about I for inner word. <laughs> Thank you, man. Okay, so I'm trying to add. Let's try and add some braces around the word hello. This says Y S I W. Yank. It's not yank. Inner word. Hold on. Y S I W. Braces. It sure did work. But why? Why does what's Y stand for then? I thought Y was for yanking. Yank surrounding inner word. The brace. Uh, y must stand for something else when it comes to surrounding, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know the S part is how surround gets in there, but why does Y change its meaning? Or does it? Okay, does this mean that? What does Y mean? Copy and paste in one. Is that what that means? It was just an unused prefix, really. Oh, you can use command. You can use uppercase S to to surround in visual mode. That's cool. Let's try that. Uh, let's try and surround all this with braces. So I'm in visual mode. I'm doing capital S to surround, and I want to surround with a left brace. Hey, it worked. It did a weird indentation though. Let's try that again with the right brace. Let's see if it doesn't. So I'm just doing capital Y. No, no, no. Shift V. Sorry, shift S. Right brace. Oh, it still did a weird indentation. Probably has to do something with my indent settings. Yeah, let's try that one. So we're going to add Oh shoot, I should just delete. Hold on. Let's go delete surrounding right brace, delete surrounding right bracket. There we go. Oh, it left some weird spaces, but oh well. So why yank? No, sorry. Insert Surrounding on um, Y S A W quote. How can I? Gosh, I'm trying to create a mental mnemonic for the Y meaning to add. So it's breaking my. It's like really messing with my head because Y has always meant copy in Vim. Yeah, YS means surround. Got you on that. But uh, it's still, still, it's like really hard on my brain because Y has always meant copy before. So it's like YS to surround is like, oh, maybe I can change that. What would I change it to? What I would want that to be is almost like insert, but I don't want to end. I can't enter insert mode and make that happen. I see why they what they didn't use I course huh yeah you can't use s hmm I'll probably change it to something at some point cool okay so let's um Let's get back to working on this behavior tree here. 
We should let's see if we can compile. We should basically all I did was add these different words. Behavior south, west, north, east, northwest, all them's unused function behavior dir. Okay, let's get behavior dir so that we can set a direction. That's all we want to do. So if uh, so we'll, let's select. B dot type no we want to do dir south oh uh, use control p I use something else I use um just finish that there that's not what it is What? Okay, anyways. What I use is FZF. So you see me, whenever I, uh, whenever I press, uh, I got it set to GF, like go find. And um, yeah, fuzzy, have you heard of FZF? I love FZF. Control T, Control P. I tried both those, and I just really didn't find them to be what I wanted, I wanted, there was a few things that I couldn't quite do with control T and control P, both of them, uh, they just didn't quite work, but I found my solution by making my own C tags. So I always make C tags and that basically creates my own tags file and FCF works really well with these tag files and it's super fast. And it can execute commands too, For so for all these different entries, like it can execute a bunch of different Vim commands. Like if I wanted to open up uh, AI component, I mean, this is FZF, it's running in a little Vim terminal and I can change, choose different things. Let's say I open up AI component. I could set it, see, um, I've got it so each one of my, every time it opens a file, it executes normal and then ZZ quote uh, slash G. And basically what that does is it opens it up, opens up that file to the last point that I was at. Um, which is super neat too. But I could I could add, execute any sort of commands after opening that file. Vim commands. That's pretty neat. So let's close that. Okay, so if we add KC behavior south, then we need to set an AI component to have it. We need AI components to have a dir now. Which used to be a compass direction. Probably should have that in there as well, but let's just call it an int for now. Int dir. An AI component has no dir to start with. Okay, so we would just go e .ai dir equals c behavior south. What the heck? Oh. Switch. <laughs> My C++ brain is broken. Because I've been working on this AI system with with sequences and selects. Oh, not behavior val type. Behavior val int val. There we go. Okay, we should be able to set a few different, let's set up all the compass directions real quick. Um, 
Great. There, we've got something super basic. So we got an AI component that can set its own direction to any one of those compass directions. Yep, I just did that with a... Uh... Thank you, thank you for pointing that out. I, uh, I really do need to upgrade my Vim skills, but I did that just a second ago. My, the last one there, I went F, E. Hey, Pete and Wally. Yeah, no, totally, thank you. The more nitpicking you do, the more we'll find some things that I don't know. Like the A, the A character for a round wor word. I'm happy you use Vim as well. Oh, it's so great. It's been a while since somebody Vim Strong came on the stream the stream. Help me out. Uh right, so behavior dir. Delete till, yeah, sometimes I you do that. Like DT colon. Yeah, that's one I have in my arsenal. You know what I wish could, you could do? I wish I always wish I know you can use macros to do this, but I always wish you could you could delete to like if I wanted to um, find a find something and then delete and put that all as one command so that I could repeat it. I love repeating, right? So if I like if I go delete till colon that that deletes up to that colon, and if I repeat that again on this next line, that works. But it'd be sweet if I could find the letter H and then delete to colon, right? And combine both of those into one thing that I could easily just repeat. And I know you can do that with a macro, but I don't like, I don't know, macros just aren't that super easy to use. D2, that's the end of the line, right? And I don't use those two very much, do I? I just use shift D for that. You can prefix delete till? Tell me how, man. Did I did I mix did I miss this awesome feature of Vim where I can do things that I was just describing? That'd be so sweet. Oh. Okay, DT semicolon. Two DT. Oh, I know. What yeah, I knew you could do that. I knew you could do that. But um, I want to be able to do a set like a motion and then an action and combine those into one command so that I can repeat that. You know, like, um, like again, if I want to move, find the V character, delete to the colon character, right? And then repeat, and I would just repeat both of those things, but it doesn't repeat both of those things, it just repeats the last thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gosh, I wish, ah, I wish this were possible without macros. Hmm. Capture groups? What's a capture group? Control V, yeah, I love Control V. Woo, Control V. Oh, hey, look at that. This is super weird. I'm repeating that control V command all over the place. <laughs> Destroy code. Destroy. Yeah, right. I forget too. I know macros really are not that hard. Oh, search. 
Okay, yeah, we could do that. That would be one way to do it. Search and replace. That's something I don't actually use much at all. Let's try some of that out. Hacking into the Pentagon. Oh, a capture group. Okay, I know now I know what you mean about a capture group. Right, you would use ca uh, that. You know what? That is a one way to combine it, huh? Let's do that. Wait, then why didn't that work? Oh, search. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gosh, my brain's not working here. So I turn off the S, or do I turn off that slash as well? No. Well, yeah, no, that found it, right? Oh, I see what you mean. So that's that's just searching. And you can scope it with, yeah, Shift V. That's cool. Percent S. Oh, the percent S isn't that the thing that it finds? Okay, yeah, let me select the block. Oops. For, so my commands are a bit different. I have S mapped to repeat command. So that's why I have to consciously press the F key right now. Nope, that doesn't work. Not in visual line mode. <laughs> Dang. My Vim setup's a bit different. Um... I'm just trying to do this search and replace. Search and replace is something I never, ever, ever use because I don't ever remember the freaking um, regular expressions part. But I should be able to do that, right? Okay, so F starts search mode. I want to search for, I think I need to just do this, right? Let's do. Yeah, shift V to select scope. I got you there, but I can't really do that, or it didn't work for me. Oh, t oh, wait, maybe in visual mode it actually will. Okay, so I'm in visual mode, and now if I press S, no. Oh, no, 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 it's slash, right? There, slash. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I do have to type S. Oh, okay. So slash. Um, let's type in behavior and convert that to VR. No, then there's no no ending slash. That didn't work. Huh? What am I doing wrong? Let's try that again. We'll just do, oops. Oh, keep on pressing my repeat. Yeah, I have that. That's also one of the changes I made to Vim. I don't use colon. I use semicolon. So let's do that again. S. Behavior. Your, isn't it? Don't you get a, a, a slash there at the end? Pattern not found behavior. Do I have to select? It's not working for me when I do that. Uh, let's try, okay, let's try it again. Um, it worked, but it only did one of them. That's so weird. Oh, don't you have to put a G at the end? Man, this is, <laughs> I think I have to put a G at the end, right? So I do, okay, command mode while I'm in visual mode. Yeah, I wonder what happened there. Uh, behavior. Don't you need the G? The G didn't work either. Hmm. 
You can, thank you. Thank you. How would I do? How do I do a global search and replace? Isn't there like don't can I just do that from here? I'm not in visual mode. I'm just in normal mode. No. Hold on. Let's get some basic stuff here, because I'm I'm missing something. It's probably with my custom Vim setup. I've got a, a lot of like little things replaced and work like letters that are different. Yeah, so here's the G command. Oh, the percent S. Oh, you're right. The percent S. You've been saying that the whole time. Oh, duh. Oh, this is this is only for the current line. <laughs> All right, we got it now. We got it. Watch this. All right. Command percent S. Which one's percent? <laughs> like which one's percent? Behavior viewer globally. Yes, it did the whole dang file. It worked. Okay, great, great. Now, if we wanted to change only these visual lines, um, just Vim training. Thank you, Vim training from the Twitch chat. I love it. You guys are helping me upgrade my Vim skills. Anything I can learn right here, right? If I find one little thing that helps me improve my workflow this will be this will be worth so much time and saved in the future okay I got these visual lines selected let's see if we can go ahead and add, try that same thing the percent s do I have to do the G I don't think so whoa oh, that's weird did the whole file again That wasn't that it, right? I thought it was too. Okay, so I got the visual. Let's see what this says about this here. Oh, oh, that's needed. Is that is that what I'm doing the whole time? I'm deleting. Oh, what what the heck is that? What is the what are those characters there at the beginning? It probably has something to do with like. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try this again. Do I need the percent for this one? Oh, it means current. Oh! Yeah, no, that makes sense. No percent? Okay, no percent. Behavior. Oh, look at that. It totally worked. Wait, but it missed some. It missed the... How did it miss half of them? So, yeah, so the... Cons the so, um... Amerijan's saying it's the, uh... Oh, I do need the G for that. Okay. Amerijan's saying that is the... That means current selection. And that totally makes sense. So, I'm doing Shift V to enter visual line mode. And then I press the command key or whatever whatever yours is bound to. Mine's bound to semicolon. Mostly, most of the time, it's bound to, to uh, colon. So I'm press enter in that command mode. So we've got an apostrophe, a left brace, a comma, another apostrophe, and then a right brace. And apparently, that means the current selection. So the lines we have selected, or the current characters and lines we have selected, right? So we're gonna do S behavior viewer, and then a G at the end. It worked. Ha! All right. Yeah. Let's do another one. Let's change all the words statics in this selection to, whoops. So this selection, we're gonna change all the statics to to um, just nothing. Let's change it, let's delete those. Okay, that worked, sweet. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll forget to. I definitely will. Um, all right, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Now the whole um, regular expression thing. If I were to. So let's say if so let's say I want to capture. Let's go back to that. And let's practice that v, that regular expression part. So if I want to want to capture those as a as a um, like let's say I want the the letter after behavior. I want to capture that s and use it somehow. Let's practice that. So um, entering command mode. Um, I want to do behavior, and you did a. Do I have to? I have to do like a that. Is it capture dot? What was those characters you used? Right. So I have to escape the just the parentheses. Okay, and it's a dot star. Right. Of course, dot star. So I can select a bunch of characters. So we got dot star. We're escaping the parentheses. So we're changing all behavior to just fior. And then what I type, if I wanted to add the, if I want to add that character back in, would I do percent %s right here? Nope. How do I use the capture group again? Oh, 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 okay, so when I do an, a regular expression, slash zero is everything, and slash one is index-based. Oh, I do need a left slash at the end? Okay. Oh, okay, slash one would be the first capture group. Slash two would be the second capture group. Gotcha! Okay, let me see if I can figure this out on my own now, then. Um, so I've got that selected. Command, so, dude, I feel like I forgot the first part. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't, it's S, it is S. Uh, behavior, gotta escape these parens. Wanna change that to viewer, and then slash zero for Oh, right, so after that, after the viewer, we want to do all the capture groups. Huh, What? how did I mess up there? It is, so I don't need the right slash before that? Okay, that's probably what it is, huh? Oh, shoot, I should just do that. Okay. Is it one or is it zero? Let's try that with one. Yeah, look at that, it worked there. Did it? Do I need a G? For it to modify them all. So do I need a slash G and then a slash one after that? No, that didn't work. Hmm. Why so why didn't that command Let's see? Why doesn't that Right, the the slash one is part of the substitute. I, I I get that. Why when I run this though, why does it not do the so we've got some C behavior south here and we've also got C behavior south there. Why is these other ones not converting when I do that? Hey Goku, what's up man? Oh, that's right. Of course it is. It's everything. Oh, it's combining. Okay. Let me see if I can figure this out then. I want to do everything but Goku, I'm doing some um, Vim training here right now. I'm upping my Vim skills. Yeah. All 
All right, so we want to do. Oh, did I select all those characters? No. Okay, so instead of all the way to the end of the line, I want to do every character except. space. Dang. That's why I'm, I'm not so good with regu regular expressions. Let me try and understand this. Behavior... Oh, okay. This is inside. Wait, why are so you you got a capture group there and then I don't get this second part of the capture group here. But I'll try this. Let's see what's let's see what happens. Um Ah. Wait, what's different about that? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, no. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, I see. No, there's no slash there. Okay, so we're capturing. We got behavior, capture group. Behavior, capture group. Let me try that. Um, yeah, it worked. It totally worked. Nice one, Amarajan. But what? I'm trying to understand why it worked. You're curious to know, you know nothing about game design. Why code behavior trees in C++ and not Swift? Um, okay, well that goes back to, um, basically you can just kind of ignore the behavior trees part of your question because it's really more of a question of why code in C++ and not Swift. Um, well, it's not necessarily, uh, this is a preference of my own, first of all, but secondly, um, it's a portability thing. Swift doesn't compile on every platform, um, and especially when you get to consoles, like my last game, Songbringer. Uh, it got ported thanks to my amazing publisher, Double Eleven. They ported it to um, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, Songbreakers everywhere, man. And those kinds of platforms, you definitely can't... If, if you write your game in Swift, it'd be hell to try and port all that code, refactor all that code. My last game was 125,000 lines of code. And um, trying to port all that to from Swift to C or C++, which is a more universal language, would have been hell. So you might as well start and write your game in C or C++ in the first place so that it can compile on all sorts of platforms like PlayStation and Xbox and all that. It's the portability. So you capture stuff between the... Be oh, between the behaviors! I get you now. I get you now. So I was trying to write a regular expression where it would capture all the characters except for a colon or a space. You know, like all the characters up to the space character. How would I do that? Yeah, you're the same story, right? Write your game and see. Use like SDL is great. I probably should switch from... Underneath everything that I'm I'm using Coco's 2DX, which is just hugely bloated stuff I don't need. Yeah. What's your game uh, that you're writing, man? Yeah, you're welcome, Goku. Any more questions, fire them out, man. I'm happy to answer anything. Of course. Of course. Okay. Your game's called The Dark Room. Do you have anything up about it? you have a website or some... Twitter gifts or something you could share. Love to lo love to know more about it, man. 
Okay, let me type that in by hand to see if I can figure it out, to see if I got it right. Oops. Okay, I want to change the word behavior. I'm going to capture everything. up to the colon character and I want to change that to Vior and the first capture group. Oh yeah, it worked. It worked. Oh ho ho ho! Um, let's try it again. This time I want to capture everything up to the colon or the semicolon. Google it. Alright man, I'll Google it. York Jikadir. Oh, sweet. Is it a text based game? Cool, man. Nice. So how how well is your game doing, man? What you uh, how did everything get? How did you enjoy the process of making it? How did how, what were the results of making it? Can I get it on Steam? Nice. <laughs> nice man way to go oh there's no steam oh this is the dark room sorry gosh somebody somebody freaking there's also dark room Wait, this looks like your this looks like the same concept. Oh no, it's got some tech. It's got some art. Whew, man, I'm really upgrading my skills today. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, exclusivity. That's a huge thing. Okay, so let's get back to let's get back to this behavior tree, and um, we'll see if we can just set some directions for the AI. Oh wait, okay. So when we tick all the input, all the systems, we want to actually do AI system tick happens before the move system at least. Because we want to be able to set the AI's input. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we'll do that with input. So AI system tick runs before move system tick. And then we run behaviors. And then we apply, apply direction as input. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and switch. What the? Ah, uh, ah, uh, what ha what happened? <laughs> so weird. What's up, S Haho ninety three? Uh, yeah, you're using C plus plus. You have an array list class, okay? The class only accepts values of the type float, okay? Now I need to change it into a template, and I get errors. Can I give you advice? Well, it kind of depends on the error. What's the error you're getting? Okay, so we're gonna switch 
e.ai.dir. What the? The indent stopped working. Did I turn off in? I might have turned off indenting or something like that accidentally with all those random commands I was executing. I want to restart my Vim session here. That's just throwing me for a loop. Let's open up AI system again. So we're switching the EI to AI to dir. Direction zero is north. So we would go E dot move. Oh wait, we want to do this. If E dot move, if this entity has a move component, then we switch the current direction and set up the current motion and all that. Data member array, name of my variable cannot be a member of a template. Uh, I don't know exactly, but if you could, you could post like a paste bin link to your code and I could check it out. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Though. You have a confession? You're actually an Emacs user. <laughs> right on. Do you use, um, do you use that Vim thing that, that turns Emacs into like Vim commands or cause, um, I almost went to use Emacs as well. But I have an older computer. Yeah, evil. You're using evil? Cool. Right on. I almost did that as well because I see all the powerful stuff that Emacs has. Um, but the reason I didn't was because I couldn't get it to run very fast. I have a pretty old laptop. My laptop's from 2013. So it's just it's hard enough to try and stream while <laughs> writing code. Like I don't know if you can hear this, but my fan is actually running on my CPU. There's nothing happening here. In fact, all that we're doing is just streaming. It's really all that my CPU is doing right now. And see, my game show software that I'm using for streaming is just eating up so much CPU. No, Clang's still running. Oh. What? What is Clang doing running? This is not supposed to be running. Let's force quit that. This has been happening a lot lately with the latest Xcode. It's like leaving these Clang processes running sometimes. So weird. Is anybody else, is anybody on the stream experienced this lately? The latest Xcode version 10.0 has been leaving Clang processes running like crazy and it's like super killing my performance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, I wish Emacs wasn't quite as much of a resource hog. One thing I did is I re I upgraded from um, I upgraded from regular Vim to NVim recently, and that was pretty cool. Class array list, private constant size, template class T T. No, 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 no. You want to no, no. You want to put um, contact Apple maybe? Yeah, thanks for that. So you want to write, rewrite this code a little bit here. Let me let me just like show you what that's supposed to be. So your your code uh, your code's currently like that. You want it to be like this. When you're creating a template class, your template goes at the beginning. So you want to go template class t class array list, and then you just use a t inside the class. So that just rewrite your code like this. So um, your ten so the the principle to learn there is that you can you can preface any class or even a function you can preface functions with template class blah 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 and you can like you can put other classes too like if you want to go class k I'm trying to type a k but I'm typing l's I'm just class a class blah 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 you could use whatever whatever types of you could have all these different kind of classes right um. And then use them all inside your. So if you had a class A as well, you could also go A pointer. A, da, da, you know? You can even use type names. You don't have to use class. You can use the word type name, which is a little more vague and accepting of all things. I like to use type name instead of class myself. Um, but that said, you typically, if you, well, if you want to compile your code faster, you should use templates sparingly. 
So my warning has been said. I have a whole video about it. Yes, yes, I'm on a Mac. Oh no, are you gonna tell me I need to be on Windows? I hate Windows, man. I really hate, I don't mean to start a flame war or anything, but I just, I don't prefer Windows. I don't prefer Windows at all. I like Linux. I like Linux and I like Mac OS. Oh. Oh, you're excited that I'm on Mac? Yes. Oh, sweet. Yes, I have carabiner elements. Hell yeah, I have carabiner elements. I love carabiner. That is the most, I use carabiner for almost everything. And I also use, maybe you haven't, maybe I can show you something actually. Do you use hammer spoon? I have hammer, if you've never seen hammer spoon, you got to try out hammer spoon. Oh, you're just about to say hammer spoon? <laughs> All right, same wavelength. High five. High five. Through the we're doing it through the internet. High five. Shazam. Whoops. I love hammer spoon. Kindred spirits for sure. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I'm super glad. Hey, if anybody's watching this, so this is, I always upload my videos to YouTube. If anybody's watching this on YouTube and you're like, what the heck is Hammer Spoon? What the heck is Carabiner Elements? Carabiner Elements is a sweet ass program which allows you to remap any of your keys on your keyboard to anything else. It's so powerful. In fact, I use Carabiner Elements to remap my escape key to mouse one when I'm not in Vim. So whenever I'm like using my normal system, I'm actually, I'm not tapping because I use a, I use a, uh, a trackpad for my mousing and I hate having to click the trackpad for a mouse. So I actually use the escape key to use as a mouse button. That's pretty cool too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, when I said, when I said escape and I actually pointed to my caps lock key, escape is my caps lock key. Um, right command is my tab key. That's a good one. So whenever I'm coding, like, and I want to tab, tab, tab real quick, I can use, I can use my thumb for tabbing. My YouTube channel is called, is, is called just Nat, Nathaniel Weiss, I think. Let me put you a link to that. It's all here on my Twitch channel's info, but let me put my fingers on the right buttons here. <laughs> that should be my, my URL to my channel. E.move, well, E.input. Oh, shoot, I've already got this code. Let's open that up. Let's copy this. Oh, do I have caps lock, map to control, and escape? No, what would that do? If I'm in, if I'm in Vim and I press Control, Escape. Oh, dude, that's kind of a good. Hold on a second. I see what you mean. Cause Control, when I'm like, okay, I'm in Vim, and I'm da 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 da, and I press Control Escape. What would happen if I did that? Oh, it doesn't. Oh, did I maybe remap something? I think I might have re shoot, that doesn't, it should just send an escape, right? Right, it sends escape if you send it by itself. Ichi Sarah, what's up? Really? So it sends escape if you send it by itself? So, okay, I have a whole bunch of crazy custom modifications, and so that's maybe why this isn't working right here, but. If I if I'm just trying to press control escape, it's not doing anything for me. Cause I'm in I'm in insert mode. So insert mode. Hold on. Insert mode. I type some stuff. I want to escape out of this. I'm holding control. I'm pressing the actual escape key. Oh, it's not working. Oh, yours is a hammer spoon. Oh, it Here's a hammer spoon script for that, huh? I wonder why that's not working for me. Hmm. 
Hmm. I see what you mean, though. There's some power there, huh? Oh, so it's so basically your escape key becomes not only an escape key, but it's also a mapping for control. So you don't have to use your pinky to use control. I love it, dude. I love that. That's smart. I hate using my pinky. I actually got I actually got carpal tunnel in my left pinky once, and so I'm super averse to using my left pinky at all on the keyboard. So I, what do I do? When I actually want to go hit the control key, I usually slide my fingers down and use my ring finger. Is that the ring finger? The third one? <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh, sweet. Let me show you. Let's see what's up with this. Oh, here's your init Lua. Sweet. Oh, okay, so you got a hammer spoon script which does that. That's dope. Right, right? I got you. Sweet, dude, I'm gonna save a link to your gifs here. Maybe I can maybe I can make that into something. Nice. H.G. Sarah, how you been, man? What's up? Okay, so, well, yeah, let's copy this from Songbringer Source, AI System, and I think I had a function called Apply Input. All right, Amir Jan, dude, it was good. It was good chatting with you. Nice to meet a kindred spirit. Um, feel free to catch me on my uh, later on Twitch or uh, I'm on Twitter as well. Ergo Docs. You gotta go soon. Gotta work early tomorrow. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, man. Oh. Oh, sweet, man. Nice suggestion. I have not seen a good keyboard that's ergo in a minute. In fact, I lo I used to code a long time ago when I started coding in 1995. I started coding with one of those Windows um, ergonomic keyboards that was curved in the middle. <laughs> I actually love those. Skyvolt. Hey man, welcome to the live stream. You caught me live. You can ask me anything. We can chat about stuff. Do all your functions that use templates need to be put out of your CPP only to be implemented by your H class? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. When it comes to templates, um, you kind of want to do that uh, because templates templates have to be instantiated for every different CPP file. It's you that you load. It's kind of complex, but like basically, yes, you want to put your template functions inside the H only. Later on, you can kind of get a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more custom with it. There's one way to get around that that I know of, but you do, you pretty much don't want to use it at this point when you're learning. Nice setup, dude. Whoa, dude, this is awesome. So awesome. Oh, I love it. Are you using Tmux here for these? Or you got something? Yeah, it looks like Tmux, right? Nice. You got a vertical one and two horizontal ones. And just, oh, this is so dope. Nice mic, too. Yeah, Tmux. Sweet. I love it. That's like a 15-inch MacBook Pro. Looks like. Sweet, man. Hot damn. I'm not logged in. Oh, it's an archive post, I see. Hey, dude, props. This is looking really sweet. Really sweet. Hey, that keyboard comes in silver, too. Nice, man. Nice. I love it. 
Yeah. All right, catch you next time. Cheers. Later. Okay, so I was creating an a an apply input function. I do have to get going pretty soon. So, but I'll create this a this apply input function before I go. Oh, we just got to set button down for the direction. That's all really simple. Okay, we got apply input. So we need it if e dot move and e dot input. AI also has vector movement. Oh, maybe I should just do all vector movement. That would probably simplify things a lot. What exactly am I programming? I'm working on a new video game called Load Ragger. It's a five on five multiplayer game. It's a voxel engine. And it has some creative elements that makes it different from other types of five versus five games. You can switch roles at runtime. You can, or during the match, you can carve out lanes each match, so your lanes are different, and um, you can build buildings. It's kind of like a, yeah, it's a five versus five game basically. Um, I'm currently working in a style right now where I'm doing only two dimensional mock up game for gameplay, and um, so none of you. You'll see no three-dimensional graphics on this stream, but give me about a month and I'll get the voxel engine back up to running again. I turned it off because I needed to focus on gameplay. Gameplay only. So e dot input dot set button down. E dot ai dot dir. Let's do a button type. E uh, no c button. Up. Uh, yeah, there'll be AI. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm finally starting the AI system. So um, what I've got done on today's stream is basically I've got the behaviors loading. So basically, look, let's take a look at this. All my AI will load from data. So let's look, open up the creep.txt. Basically, every one of the, this is my data file describing an entity. And what that allows me to do is basically uh, run the game without recompiling. So I can change I can change stuff in this text file for the description of this entity. And I don't need to recompile anything to change the AI or change properties of the AI. So here's some code that I'll eventually put. This is the AI system running its a, a, a sequence of behavior tree leaves that controls an AI. The technique is called behavior trees. Yeah, man, Merry Christmas. And happy holidays to you as well. Happy New Year. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so basically I've just got a very simple, simple behavior tree going here where all it does is set the south for the creep moving. Now will this work? Nope. 
What am I missing here? Set button down. Oh, I need if if is down. So okay. This should all compile. I do got to get going. It's getting late for me. Behavior dir unuse. Oh, do we have? We're not using that functions. We need to hook that up into the different functions that could be called in this behaviors tree system. So C behavior dir calls the function behavior dir. Man, I'm kind of intimidated by how much code I'm gonna have to refactor here. Any tutorial for AI programming? Um, well, yeah, I do. Um, I would look at be at, at tutorials on behavior trees, honestly, to start with. That's kind of a good way to, to go. And in fact, I was just searching for one a second ago. Yeah, Pete and Wally. Was this the one that I learned with? I can't remember which one I learned behaviors trees with, but I think this is a good article here. Yeah, this is a good one. I think I read this one. There, I'd recommend this for AI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we got that compiling. Um, let's see if it works. So if this works, then the AI will just immediately start moving south. Okay, so here we are. We're going into the two-dimensional gameplay mock-up. This is all cheesy graphics. Hey, oh, he started moving north. Ha! <laughs> okay, let's make him move slower. Oh, I see why he started moving north. Well, let's make him move a lot slower. Because I did, I did north, or I did south, and plus the north value, whatever. I need to work on that. I think I'm going to change all the AI so they move with vectors in this game instead of uh, compass directions. Co Songbringer used compass directions. There he goes. He's moving north. Let's make him move even slower. He's still moving fast. Speed six. He should move slowly to the north. He's the little, um, so I'm the circle character, and the, uh, there you go. See this uh, up here, just to the north uh, east, is a little skull-like character moving through the trees. So eventually that will represent a creep character. And um, there you go. That's the beginnings of an AI system. So let's review that code. So all, all it is is it's a behavior tree that selects a sequence. There's only one sequence it can select, so it selects the first one, of course. And all it does in that sequence is set its direction to south, which translates in the code to north. <laughs> and so, but anyways, the whole point is we have um, behavior trees implemented, started the beginnings of that. Um, we have it loading from data, and what I need to do now is start creating tons of different functions for things like the if leaf, the dir leaf. So we have dir south, but can we have dir rand for random? Um, all, there's tons of like specialties to the if command. There's setting targets, setting speed, introducing a delay into the entity's behavior. Um, you know, that's... So, oh shoot, that's a lot of it right there. So there's only like really like four different commands I need to implement to get this AI working. But the if command has tons of different sub, sub commands, if you will. So but anyways, that's it for this stream. I'm glad that got all created. And a component of AI that's often a look in games is steering. Steering gives you more believable movement with AI. Steering, yeah, totally. Yeah, um, 
that's why I'm thinking that that converting everything to vector movement instead of compass directions is going to be a good thing, because then you can I can use steering. Good call, horror vacuum. All right, so um, thanks a lot for watching this stream. That's going to be it. I've already been streaming for a while now, a couple hours, so it's time for me to stop and get some dinner. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in the next stream. I'm Wizard Foo, a.k.a. Nathaniel Weiss, signing off.